Hi, today I'd like to show you a project that has been going on for quite a while and that I finally managed to complete. So here I have a Tektronix 222 oscilloscope that I got well, a couple of months ago and well I mean it's one of those things that I just got more for fun rather than anything else. It's one of those tiny little um, portable CRT oscilloscopes and if you remember my video about the Panasonic scope I have a weak spot for those things and this one was in excellent condition so I just couldn't turn it down. Um, it's a digital scope and the nice thing is it's battery powered and everything so you can just use it and um, use it to make floating measurements. So to show you this scope is currently running and when I unplug the power on the back it obviously keeps on running. Oh wait no it doesn't. And, well, you might have guessed the reason why it doesn't keep on running when I unplug the mains power is, as you might have guessed, in here we have a age-old lead-acid battery and if we take this thing out it has a something on it that might look like a date code 97 um, so this thing probably expired 10 years ago or something. So what I'd like to do is I'd just like to quickly talk you through the problem really and the solution I came up with and show you what my solution looks like. And if you have a look around on the internet it's a very common problem. Basically everyone who owns a tech scope like these has the problem of the batteries being flat and you obviously can no longer get them from Dectronics and well, they are made of unobtainium like everything else in the scope. So people have come up with all sorts of creative ways of replacing the batteries. Um, that starts from uh, using similar sized lead acid batteries and shoving them in there to having a whole bunch of nickel metal hydro cells in series and using them, which to be honest probably works quite well, all the way to just having a bunch of lithium cells and those things. Um, but I was thinking, well, I would really like to have something that last for a while because um, the problem is if you get say another lead acid cell or a couple of cells really and fit them in there you're going to run the same problem again in 10 years time and you know they are hard to get now they will be hard to get or even hard to get in 10 years time um, so really I wanted a solution that lasts but also is a bit you know geeky and maybe a bit over engineered and everything um, so what I thought is I should design a board that lets me use normal 18650 lithium batteries in there. Um, the idea being that you know those cells are really quite common nowadays and because they're so common I hope they're still available in you know, 10, 15, 20 years time. So um, what I did is I designed a board that fits in there that takes these cells that you can just replace because you, know, you can just buy them and then hopefully that allows your scope to run for a little longer. And I'm not planning to go into any of the design details, um, I've written all of that up on my website so if you're curious about the actual circuit and all the details, um, please go and have a look at that, I'll put the link down in the description. Um, anyway, so the main problem is that obviously those lithium cells have a voltage of you know, normally 3.6 volts or something and want to be charged at 4.2 volts. Um, the scope expects a voltage of 8 volts and wants to charge the battery at 9.5 volts. So we need some sort of circuit that goes between the scope and the batteries. And conceptually that's very, very simple. Um, all I have is basically a battery charger that charges the battery from the 9.5 volts and a boost converter that outputs the 8 volts from the battery. And then I've got a comparator that looks at the voltage and if the scope is up to 9.5 volts it turns on the charger and if the scope doesn't turn on the 9.5 volt it just sends on the boost converter and supplies power to the scope from the batteries. And that's really all it is and it's I mean, conceptually extremely simple. Um, it just took quite a long while for me to actually build and you know come up with all the little details because um, as I said I, this scope is in excellent condition and I just wanted to have something that really fits in there and also looks nice. I didn't just want to have you know a bunch of batteries and some heat shrink and so let me just show you what I came up with and how it fits in in the scope. Ta-da! Here we have the product of way too much over engineering. Um, this is the battery pack that I designed 
and as you can see it can take up to three 18650 lithium ion cells. Um, they are in parallel so you can put either one, two or three in there, it will work either way. And that fits just in the side of the scope here where the original battery used to sit. It makes some um, pretty good use of the space in there. Um, just uses the connector that was harvested from the old battery. And if you plug the scope in, um, you see it shows you that it's currently being powered by the scope and that it is actually charging the batteries as well and there is a fault indicator as well that shows you when something is wrong with the batteries. And unlike that almost 20 year old lead acid battery from before, if we unplug this, the scope is now actually running off batteries, you see, no leads attached. Um, I still haven't quite finished putting the case together, um, but I think we should look a bit closer at what's exactly in there. So just to give you an idea how the whole thing is built, it's basically a baseboard like this. Um, this is one I used for playing around with. And the case is built using those cut pieces of acrylic, so that's um, three millimeter um, acrylic. And that just gives you that um, basically case so that's just made from those pieces of um, acrylic. And there's also one piece of acrylic running across here um, to make the whole thing a bit wider so it actually fits in the case of the scope and is held down firmly with those rubber inserts that are in there to keep the battery from falling around. Basically on this side here I've got the um, boost converter and the battery charger chip so that's all this here and down here I also have the um, comparator that looks at the voltage brought in from the scope and which is between charging and um, supplying, supplying voltage. And you may be able to spot there a few botches on here. Um, as always with a first first run board, um, there's always something wrong. In this case, there was just a few um, bits about the comparator that made it not go into um, supply and charge modes reliably. Um, but yeah, apart from that, there isn't a whole lot um, to it electronics-wise. The biggest deal probably was coming up with a scheme that you know fits in nicely in the case and also looks, you know at least half decent. Um, for the front panel I made those little light pipes also from um, transparent acrylic in this case and just you know, stuck them in in the front panel that just goes on here and you know conducts the light from those LEDs down there to the front panel. Um, that's the only place where I used some very untidy glue. Um, the rest of the case does snap together just firmly. Um, I might add some drops of glue here and there to make it a bit more firm. Um, but yeah, apart from that, there isn't really much uh, much to it. As I said, I just really wanted something that you know looks half decent and uh, most importantly something that uses standard batteries that I can hopefully still replace in 10, 20 years time. Um, because I've got no reason to believe this cope wouldn't work in 20 years time. Um, so I really want something where I can just you know, buy new batteries if I have to. And also do note that you should only use the highest quality batteries. Um, in this case, indication of madness and burning down your house is a good indication for quality, um, as is overstating the capacity on the batteries. But, I mean, even if you have normal batteries in there that aren't completely, well, unreliable numbers on them, um, you will probably get a bit more capacity out than you did with the original lead acid battery in the first place. One slight niggle is that I'm having a fairly low charge current on the batteries and that has to do with the scope having its own built-in charge circuit and that doesn't play very nice with my circuit. Um, apart from that I also did add a um, battery protection circuit down here um, so you don't even have to use protected cells um, and that circuit will you know, detect overcharge, um, over discharge, over voltage, under voltage and those things and cut the cells out if necessary so so in terms of future proofing you can really stick in any kind of lithium ion battery as long as the charge voltage is 4.2 volts it will just work with it which I think is hopefully good enough to keep this scope running for the foreseeable future and thanks to the economics of having PCBs made in China I actually have a whole bunch of PCBs spare so if you want to build one of those battery packs yourself I've obviously got all the design files on the website but if you want one of the bare PCBs, um, I'm more than happy to send you one or a couple um, for the price of postage, basically.
So I really hope that you found this what was basically a teaser video for my latest pet project at least a bit interesting. And as I said, if you want to learn anything about the circuit or the construction, head over to the website because I've got the proper documentation written up there. And I really hope that at least someone will find this useful for themselves as well. Um, because as I said, those scopes are fairly popular and everyone seems to be struggling with the batteries. So if people decided to build one of those circuits themselves, I would be very happy knowing that um, I did something useful for once. But anyway, thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you next time. And I really hope that this item will be useful to someone um, because as I said there are lots of people with those oscilloscopes around and if you read on the internet everyone seems to be having the same problem with the batteries over and over again and yeah it would be great if this little circuit could help you know one person at least to uh, close the